Khuzestan province is one of the 31 provinces of Iran. It is in the southwest of the country, bordering Iraq and the Persian Gulf. Its capital is Arvaz and it covers an area of 63,238 square kilometers. Other major cities include Baybahan, Abadan, Andamesh, Khoramshah, Bandar Imam, Desfal, Shushtad, Amidiyah, Izer, Dhbaqe Malik, Marshar, Suzangad, Ram Hormoz, Shadigan, Susa, Masjid Soleiman, Minor Island and Hoverizer. In 2014 it was placed in Region 4. As the most ancient Iranian province, it is often referred to as the birthplace of the nation, as this is where the history of the Persian Empire begins. Historically, one of the most important regions of the ancient Near East, Khuzestan is what historians refer to as ancient Elam, whose capital was in Susa. The Achaemenid old Persian term for Elam was Hujia, which is present in the modern name. Khuzestan, meaning the land of the Khuz, refers to the original inhabitants of this province. The Susian people where it is recorded as inscription as Hauya or Huja. In Middle Persian the term evolved into Khuz and Khuzi. The pre-Islamic Partho-Sassanian inscriptions gives the name of the province as Khuzestan. The seat of the province has for the most of its history been in the northern reaches of the land, first at Susa and then at Shushtar. During a short spell in the Sassanian era, the capital of the province was moved to its geographical center, where the river town of Hormuzardasha, founded over the foundation of the ancient Horpahir by Ardashir I, the founder of the Sassanian dynasty in the 3rd century CE. This town is now known as Arvaz. With the increase in the international sea commerce arriving on the shores of Khuzestan, Arvaz became a more suitable location for the provincial capital. The river Karun is navigable all the way to Arvaz. The town was thus refurbished by the order of the Qayyar king, Nasser al-Din Shah and renamed after him, Nasiri. Shushtar quickly declined, while Arvaz, Nasiri prospered to the present day. Currently, Khuzestan has 18 representatives in Iran's parliament, the Majlis, and six representatives in the Assembly of Experts. Khuzestan is known for its ethnic diversity. The population of Khuzestan consists of Lures, Iranian Arabs, Kashkai people, Afsha tribe, indigenous Persians and Iranian Armenians. Kutsas Torn's population is predominantly Shia Muslim, but there are small Christian, Jewish and Sunni minorities. Half of Kutsas Torn's population is Lures. Since the 1920s, tensions on religious and ethnic grounds have often resulted in violence and attempted separatism, including an uprising in 1979, unrest in 2005, bombings in 2005-06 and protests in 2011, drawing much criticism of Iran by international human rights organizations. Etymology the name Khuzestan means the land of the Khuzi and refers to the original inhabitants of this province, the Susian people, in the same evolutionary manner that Old Persian changed the name Sindh into Hind. The name of the city of Arvaz also has the same origin as the name Khuzestan, being an Arabic broken plural from the compound name, Suqal Amarvaz, the medieval name of the town, that replaced the Sasanian Persian name of the pre-Islamic times. The entire province was still known as the Kurdi, or the Koji, until the reign of the Safavid king Tamas I in the 16th century. The southern half of the province, south, southwest of the Awaz Ridge, had come by the 17th century to be known, at least to the imperial Safavid chancery as Arabistan. The contemporaneous history, the Alamara i Abbasi by Iskander Beg Munshi, written during the reign of Shah Abbas I the Great, regularly refers to the southern part of Khuzestan as Arabistan. The northern half continued to be called Khuzestan. In 1925, the entire province regained the old name and the term Arabistan was dropped. There is also a very old folk etymology which maintains the word Kuz stands for sugar and Kuzi for people who make raw sugar.
The province has been a cane sugar producing area since the late Sasanian times, such as the sugar cane fields of the Des Riverside in Desfil. Kaujestan has been the land of Kaujis who cultivate sugar cane even today in Haftipa. There have been many attempts at finding other sources for the name, of, but none have proved tenable. Geography and Climate the province of Khuzestan can be basically divided into two regions, the rolling hills and mountainous regions north of the Arvaz Ridge, and the plains and marshlands to its south. The area is irrigated by the Karaun, Karka, Yarahi and Maroon rivers. The northern section maintains a non-Persian that flows into the Karun above Shushtar contributes most of the salt that the river carries. As such, the freshness of the Karun waters can be greatly enhanced if the Rudai shore could be diverted away from the Karun. The same applies to the Yarahi and Karkar in their lower reaches. Only the Marin is exempt from this. The climate of Khuzestan is generally very hot and occasionally humid, particularly in the south while winters are much more cold and dry. Summertime temperatures routinely exceed 44 degrees Celsius and in the winter it can drop below freezing, with occasional snowfall, all the way south to Avaz. Khuzestan is possibly one of the hottest places on Earth with maximum temperature in summer soaring up to 55 degrees Celsius air temperature with temperatures coming close to 60 degrees Celsius at times. The world's highest unconfirmed temperature was a temperature flare-up during a heat burst in June 1967, with a temperature of 87 degrees Celsius in Abadan in the Khuzestan province. 30. Reliable measurements in the city range from minus 5 to 53 degrees Celsius. Khuzestan has desert conditions and experiences many sandstorms. History. Antiquity The province of Khuzestan is one of the centers of ancient civilization, and one of the most important regions of the ancient Near East. Based around S.U.S.A., the first large-scale empire based here was that of the powerful 4th millennium B.C. Elamites. Archaeological ruins verify the entire province of Khuzestan to be home to the Elamite civilization, a non-Semitic and non-Indo-European speaking kingdom, and the earliest civilization of Persia. The name Khuzestan is derived from the Elamite. In fact, in the words of Elton L. Daniel, the Elamites were the founders of the first Iranian empire in the geographic sense, hence the central geopolitical significance of Khuzestan, the seat of Iran's first empire. In 640 BC, the Elamites were defeated by Ashurbanipal, coming under the rule of the Assyrians who brought destruction upon Susa and Choizanbil. But in 538 BC, Cyrus the Great was able to reconquer the Elamite lands after nearly 80 years of Median rule. The city of Susa was then proclaimed as one of the Achaemenid capitals. Darius the Great then erected a grand palace known as Apadana there in 521 BC. But this astonishing period of glory and splendor of the Achaemenian dynasty came to an end by the conquest of Alexander of Macedon. After Alexander, the Seleucid dynasty came to rule the area. As the Seleucid dynasty weakened, Merdadi the Parthian gained ascendancy over the region. During the Sassanid dynasty this area thrived tremendously and flourished and this dynasty was responsible for the many constructions that were erected in Avaz, Shushtar, and the north of Andamesh. During the early years of the reign of Shapur II, Arabs crossed the Persian Gulf from Bahrain to Ardashir Kura of Fars and raided the interior. In retaliation, Shapur II led an expedition through Bahrain, defeated the combined forces of the Arab tribes of Talib, Baka bin Wail, and Abd al Qiz, and advanced temporarily into Yamama in central Najd. The Sassanids resettled these tribes in Kerman and Arvaz. Arabs named Shapur II as Shaburdul Aktaf after this battle. The existence of prominent scientific and cultural centers such as Academy of Gundishapur which gathered distinguished medical scientists from Egypt. 
the Byzantine Empire, and Rome, shows the importance and prosperity of this region during this era. The John D. Shapur Medical School was founded by the Order of Shapur I. It was repaired and restored by Shapur II and was completed and expanded during the reign of Anushavan. The Muslim conquest of Khuzestan The Muslim invasion of Khuzestan took place in 639 AD under the command of Abu Musa al-Ashari from Basra, who drove the Persian satrap Hormuzan out of Arvaz. Susa later fell, so Hormuzan fled to Shushtar. There his forces were besieged by Abu Musa for 18 months. Shushtar finally fell in 642 AD. The Khuzistan Chronicle records that an unknown Arab, living in the city, befriended a man in the army and dug tunnels through the wall in return for a third of the spoil. The Basrans purged the Nestorians, the exegeter of the city and the bishop of Hormuz, and all their students, but kept Hormuzan alive. There followed the conquest of Gundeshapur and of many other districts along the Tigris. The Battle of Nahavand finally secured Khuzestan for the Muslim armies. For instance in 633-634, Kala Dibin were lead leader of the Muslim army, defeated a force of the Sassanids Arab auxiliaries from the tribes of Baka, Ejl, Talib and Namur at Ain al-Tamr. The Muslim settlements by military garrisons in southern Iran was soon followed by other types of colonization. Some families, for example, took the opportunity to gain control of private estates. Like the rest of Iran, the Muslim invasion thus brought Khuzestan under occupation of the Arabs of the Umayyad and Abbasid Caliphanites, until Yagub bin Latha Safar, from southeastern Iran, raised the flag of independence once more, and ultimately regained control over Khuzestan, among other parts of Iran, founding the short-lived Safarid dynasty. From that point on, Iranian dynasties would continue to rule the region in succession as an important part of Iran. In the Umayyad period, large groups of nomads from the Hanifa, Banu Taman, and Abd al Qiz tribes crossed the Persian Gulf and occupied some of the richest Basran territories around Arvaz and Infaz during the Second Islamic Civil War in 661 665 680 684 AD. During the Abbasid period, in the second half of the 10th century, the Assad tribe, taking advantage of quarrels under the Buwayhids, penetrated into Khuzestan, where a group of Taman had been living since pre-Islamic times. However, following the fall of the Abbasid dynasty, the flow of Arab immigrants into Persia gradually diminished, but it nonetheless continued. In the latter part of the 16th century, the Bani Kaab, from Kuwait, settled in Khuzestan, and during the succeeding centuries, more Arab tribes moved from southern Iraq to Khuzestan. Kayar period according to C. Bosworth in Encyclopedia Iranica, under the Kayar dynasty, the province was known, as in Safavid times, as Arabistan, and during the Kayar period was administratively a governor generalate. Half of Khuzestan was not known as Arabistan. Kutz as Torn's northern, more populous parts, with the capital at Shushtar, retained the old name but also occasionally was incorporated into the district of the Great Allure due to the large Bakhtiari population in half of Khuzestan. In 1856, in the course of the Anglo-Persian War over the city of Herat, the British naval forces sailed up the Karun River all the way to Arvaz. However, in the settlement that followed, they evacuated the province. Some tribal forces, such as those led by Sheikh Jabir al-Kabi, the Sheikh of Mahamara, fared better in opposing the invading British forces than those dispatched by the central government, which was quite feeble. But, the point of the invasion of the province and other coastal regions of southern Persia, Iran were to force the evacuation of Herat by the Persians and not the permanent occupation of these regions. Pahlavi era in the two decades before 1925, although nominally part of Persian territory, 
The western part of Khuzestan functioned for many years effectively as an autonomous emirate known as Arabistan. The eastern part of Khuzestan was governed by Bakhtiari Khans. Following Sheikh Kazal's rebellion, the western part of Khuzestan's emirate was dissolved by Reza Shah government in 1925, along with other autonomous regions of Persia, in a bid to centralize the state. In response Sheikh Kazal of Mahamra initiated a rebellion, which was quickly crushed by the newly installed Pahlavi dynasty with minimal casualties. A low-level conflict between the central Iranian government and the Arab nationalists of the province continued since. The name of Khuzestan came to be applied once again to the entire territory by 1936. Over the next decades of the Pahlavi rule, the province of Khuzestan remained relatively quiet, gaining to hold an important economic and defensive strategic position. Islamic Republic after the revolution with the Iranian Revolution taking place in early 1979, local rebellions swept the country with Khuzestan being no exception. In April 1979, an uprising broke out in the province, led by the Arab separatist group Arab Political and Cultural Organization, seeking to gain independence from the new theocratic rule. The Iranian embassy siege of 1980 in London was initiated by an Arab separatist group as an aftermath response to the regional crackdown in Khuzestan. After the 1979 uprising, initially it emerged the terrorists wanted autonomy for Khuzestan, later they demanded the release of 91 of their comrades held in Iranian jails. The group which claimed responsibility for the siege the Arab popular movement in Arabistan gave a number of press conferences in the following months referring to what it described as the racist rule of Khomeini. It threatened further international action as part of its campaign to gain self-rule for Khuzestan, but its links with Baghdad served to undermine its argument that it was a purely Iranian opposition group. There were allegations that it was backed by Iran's regional rival, Iraq. Their leader along with four other members of the group were killed and the fifth member, Fauzi Badavi Najad, was sentenced to life imprisonment. Iran-Iraq War During the Iran-Iraq War, Khuzestan was the focus of the Iraqi invasion of Iran, leading to the flight of thousands of the province's residents. As a result, Khuzestan suffered the heaviest damage of all Iranian provinces during the war. Iraq's President Saddam and Hussein felt confident that the Arab population of the Khuzestan would react enthusiastically to the prospect of union with Iraq. However, resistance to the invasion was fierce, stalling the Iraqi military's advance and ultimately opening a window of opportunity for an Iranian counter-offensive. What used to be Iran's largest refinery at Abadan was destroyed, never to fully recover. Many of the famous Nakhla stands were annihilated, cities were destroyed, historical sites were demolished, and nearly half the province captured by the invading Iraqi army. This created a mass exodus into other provinces that did not have the logistical capability of taking in such a large number of refugees. However, by 1982, Iranian forces managed to push Iraqi forces out of Iran. The Battle of the Liberation of Khorram Shah was a turning point in the war, and is officially celebrated every year in Iran. The city of Khorram Shah was almost completely destroyed as a result of the scorched earth policy ordered by Iraq's leader, Saddam Hussein. However, Iranian forces were able to prevent the Iraqis from attempting to spread the execution of this policy to other major urban centers. During 1990s the government of the Iran does not conduct any official ethnic census in the country. Thus it is difficult to determine the exact demographics. Beginning in the early 1990s, many ethnic Persian Khuzestanis began returning to the province. A trend which continues to this day as the major urban centers are being rebuilt and restored. Recent events in 2005, Arvaz witnessed a number of terrorist attacks which came following the violent Arvaz riots. 
The first bombing came ahead of the presidential election on 12 June 2005. In 2011, another wave of protests by Arab tribes occurred mostly in the urban area of Arvaz, before the Iran-Iraq War of the 1980s. The Arabs of Khuzestan mostly resided in the rural regions along the Karka and Karun rivers in the southwest of the province and the number living in cities was very limited. The reason for this being that the Arab tribes were still following a nomadic lifestyle. But after the end of the war, most of the refugee Arabs were relocated by the government to the urban centers and smaller towns. This conversion of lifestyle directly from nomadic to city life caused many problems and conflicts in the structure of their societies and ultimately has led to some unrest.